Right. Let's go. We back. <laughs> how you feeling, Michael? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm good, you know. I'm on one today. <laughs> I am good. You um, this morning. Sorry? Had your cornflakes this morning? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I ended up going for a little wee, uh, a little uh, wine last night. Um, and woke you up really slipped up on your words, then. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, and then just got out for a little run this morning and got on smoke. Nice. I'm ready for the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, How's your morning? It was good. I've been out for a nice run as well, but I'm depleted from it. Um, so I'll try and hold it together. But it looks like you brought the energy for both of us. So I appreciate yeah, it. You know what I mean? Why? <laughs> How do you feel depleted from it? See, I, I guess because we've already spoke about the ultramarathon in the previous one. We're already here, aren't we? I guess yeah. it was just really fucking long, lad. It was really long. Um, so I'm just a bit tired. <laughs> yeah, bless you, lad. Um, one second. Uno momento. Um, but yeah, right, we've got someone sick on today. I've been hyped for this one. Um... I'm looking forward to this one a lot because everyone we've had on so far is someone that we know. But I know, obviously, you know Ricky, but for me, literally the first time I've ever spoken to him, the first time I'm ever going to hear his voice. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that's something that is like a little bit daunting, but it's something that we're going to obviously have to move towards like, on the next few episodes, starting to speak to people that we don't know and dig a little bit deeper with them. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. And I, yeah, hopefully again from him. But yeah, that's the that's the main plan, isn't it? You know what I mean? We only know so, a certain amount of people. <laughs> like we're gonna have to start reaching out soon, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we've got three friends actually, including like four. We've got four <laughs> friends, so yeah. Now, now we need to get real. <laughs> um, but today, like we said, we've got a great episode. So we've got Ricky Gibb on today, um, and I am going to introduce him off his bio from Code, um, which is the uh, media agency that he works for, um, as I think it's really nicely written, and I think it's a nice introduction to him. So. Ricky was born and raised in Aberdeen, Scotland. He found an affinity with music videos, spending his youth glued to MTV. He attended art school in Aberdeen and after graduating, immersed himself in filming live music. He moved to London and was immediately thrown in at the deep end, shooting content and live shows with Drake, Dave, Koji Radical, Chance the Rapper, Vic Mensa, Post Malone, Tory Lanez, Vince Staples, Gets, Gigs, Pub the Enemy, Run the Jewels, the list goes on, Jesus Christ. Um, since then, Ricky has moved on to directing music videos for an array of new and inspiring artists, such as Murky's Dave, Malsum, Kinshasa. I always mess that. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Um, it is Kinshasa. Uh, Skywater, Duval, Lancey Fox, and Kadita, to name a few. Um, whilst heavily revolving around dark, humorous narratives, Ricky's work shines an absurd yet delicate light on the often fascinating and intricate ways we as humans long for connection, purpose, love, and feel and, and to feel seen. Um, which is Ricky in a nutshell, I think. Um, I've known Ricky for a little while through uh, through Bloodline, through martial arts. We trained together for quite a while, um, and he's always been doing sick shit. So I think he'll be good to kind of like chew the fat with and. It'd be interesting to like, like obviously when we started it, it's designs a catalyst for doing this, but it'll be interesting to see um, how Ricky thinks and how he breaks down his briefs and, and gets to where he gets to with the solutions, I guess, you know? Um, I, I was, so you met a bloodline, but like, what was that interaction? I mean, I know you, I know you go into a room and you're fucking top 21. So I can imagine that, you know, it was, it was very uh, casual, but what, what, I don't know. It could have been over sparring. It could have been, uh, like, how, how did that how did that sort of first interaction come about? Um, Ricky's very energetic as well, as you'll, you'll know when he pops on in a minute. Um, Ricky's got that Scottish energy, you know. <laughs> um, and we just vibed, do you know what I mean? He's got a good head. Um, and, he, again, he's a creative person, isn't it? Do you know, so, like, he's, I don't know, he's just very kind of, like, down to earth. Um and no pun intended, but obviously we just hit it off and then found out obviously a little bit deeper what we both do. We're actually working together on a few projects in the background too, um, which is cool. So yeah, from then we've always kind of just kept in touch. Um, yeah, without further ado, I think we're going to get him on soon, isn't it? Hit him with that link. Yeah, let's get him on. Ricky! And let's go. Um, like I said, I know, I know a little bit about his journey. I spoke quite 
uh, I, mean, I have spoke pretty in depth with him about certain subjects and stuff like that, but it'd be good to like go through the a bit more chronologically and see how he's got to where he's got to because he's doing some sick shit, lad. Um, like really cool stuff. Seems like he's got a cool network of people down there too to kind of brush shoulders with, you know. Yeah, I mean, like all the names that you just busted out before is Great, right? insane. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested to see like what those interactions were like, and obviously, like a lot of the work we're speaking about is the videos that he's directed. And again, like when we spoke to Steve, uh, Josh, photographer, like he's got this little style that he brings to it, but you can see that through with Ricky as well. Like he's got there's just an energy to his videos. Yeah, they stick together very well, innit? We were just watching through them again today, um, the three that we're going to talk about today. Um, and they kind of colour grading all sit well together, don't they? And again, like we, uh, when I re read out his bio before, like you can see how that a lot of them kind of points are encapsulated throughout. Um, and you can see in it, you can see how that transcends as him as a person too, like how he gets himself into the videos, you know? Like you, you, you understand now when we start talking to him and breaking his word down. Um, He's very deep, Ricky. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he's, um, yeah, he's got a good head on his shoulders. It's interesting that you say that. And also, like, in his bio, he does talk about a dark humour. But I, I did feel like watching the Murkish Dev video is um, it's quite light. It's quite light-hearted. Yeah. Without the man. I'm, I'm, in. <laughs> I'm <a> here. <laughs> Welcome, Ricky. Thank you very much for having me. How are you doing, bro? How are you? Wait, is this... Am I looking at the right stuff? Right, so it's like straight on the back, like we're in at the deep end, we just go now. <laughs> we're in. I oh, okay, good. Bam, How is everyone uh, Sundays? We're good, bro. Ricky, meet Michael. Michael, meet Ricky. Lovely to meet you, man. Lovely to meet you, man. Heard a lot about you. Yeah, like you guys. <laughs> um, and yeah, saying? welcome, welcome <clears throat> to what you think podcast, Broski. It's a pleasure to be here. On this um, gorgeous yeah, Sunday. It is. It's a very lovely Sunday. How are you feeling, bro? How's your weekend been? How has my weekend been? Good. Necessary. Super necessary. necessary. Huh? <laughs> Super necessary. Super necessary. Yeah, it was a big week, man. Big week. Um, a busy one. And this weekend's been very mellow. Nice. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Required. So it's nice that we've got to sneak this one in on a on this Sunday because it's felt like it's been it's been an appropriate pace this whole weekend, do you know what I mean, for a chat like this. So mm -hmm. it's nice. Yeah, I hear you. What, I hear what were you guys? How you been getting on? We we're just saying to Michael then before you jumped on, I ended up sneaking out last night for a little vino. Um Did you? So I to wake up this morning and shake off the shit, you know. <laughs> Running around Vicky Park getting rid of the fucking <laughs> you know a big jump you're an animal with that sort of stuff. Top um, that's running about Vicky Park and about these or something. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the weather. Um, but good, you know, again, I had a pretty quiet weekend. Um, me and Michael, we're in between bookings. So we're kind of trying to fill our time with our own stuff at the minute. And mm. um, again, like you said, just resting our heads when we can before it gets all manic again and you're juggling everything. Well, it's all it feels like anyway. Yeah, it's important that, isn't it? I think sometimes we're like of the... I don't know, you sort of, when it's busy, you're busy, and then when it's not busy, you try and keep busy, <laughs> because you're just in the mindset of that, and yeah. then it gets busy again, and you're like, fuck, well, now I feel like, uh, burnt yeah. out, because I didn't allow myself those moments, but it's hard when you're sort of, uh, you're the master of your own work ethic, or your own schedule, do you know what I mean? If someone mm -hmm. says, come into work at this time, leave work at this time, it's grand, you're like, cool, I can lead, dip at six and I can take the evening off and I was told to, you know? Mm -hmm. But when you don't have that, it's sometimes hard to just tell yourself to fucking chill out, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? This, like, this freelance uh, thing that me and Christian are on. Like, exactly like you said, it's, you know, we, we've got a couple of weeks now where um we could just sit back and relax but at the same time like in in what christian like seven or eight years we've never had this free time to mm. work to work together so it's it's difficult and like you said ricky that job comes up next week and you're like fuck i should have just chilled out these past two weeks sure, <laughs> <myself>. <laughs> yeah it's hard you do. <clears throat> it's hard yeah. it's hard i think i don't know how you guys feel but i always feel like there's always so many things 
work-wise or otherwise that I feel I've set myself to do that like moments of downtime don't rep they don't represent that no that's not the right word they don't moments of downtime don't feel like moments of downtime they feel like opportunities to do a little something else on the to-do list do you know what I mean and that is my own thing to work through do you know what I mean uh-huh. because it's like you are you are uh, yeah you're the master of your own energy and how it's you know I heard I can't remember when I heard the quote but it was like something like it's not about having like a lack of energy or an abundance of energy it's just about where you direct it so if you think that you've got no time or no energy to do this thing it's only because you're misdirecting it not because you actually have an absence of it do you know what I mean yeah uh-huh. and I deep that because it was like it's so true it's like well if you're fucked in the morning it's because you put your energy into binging some show all night do you know what I mean yeah. so it's not like you just have this like it's not as if there's been like an energy robber in the middle of the night or whatever it's just like snuck into your head and just dipped out with all your beans but it's like you just redirect it don't you yeah I guess um it's sometimes hard I think this is something you and I've touched on in the past Christian as well I think and, and something I talked to about a couple you know there's a couple other people in my life that conversations often steer towards this you know this type of thing and work ethic and our you know your internal monologue and how you talk to yourself and mm-hmm. that's a process and that's a journey you know how to get the best out of yourself with that while still showing yourself compassion oh dude super important that hit me the other day like, it was obviously when we were talking the other day briefly when you said about how you um you talk better to strangers than you will to, to yourself you know, like someone that not even fucking knowing Tesco, you're potentially going to speak to and treat better than you actually treat yourself, which is fucking bizarre when you think about it and deep that. Like, because um, I'm exactly what you're saying. I, I'm my own my own worst nightmare, bro. Like, I'll I'll go ham and hard to the wall if, as much as I can, understand and feel the need to take a break, right, and then take that break and do the whole thing that you just said. I'm I'm working my way down the to do list of. It's like I take the break from the madness of my day job say so to say to just double down on the rest of the stuff i need to do in my life it's not like i ever sit there and just be like sometimes i think i just get caught so caught up in doing that i'm never present i miss stuff you know yeah it's like you just replace one madness with another yeah yeah i think you're never really feeling like well i guess i can't speak for all of us but yeah it's um it's interesting that you know the way how how we talk to others compared to how we talk to ourselves or how we feel like you know you're talking about you know we've both got brothers we you know and, and we want the and sort of semi similar ages and stuff and you know you want the best for your family and sort of the advice you might give to your friends or your family and the compassion you might show and like the other advice you might give to be, you know, you know, maybe you just need to rest or da, 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 da. it's, it's with a softer touch than we, you and I would like to give ourselves internally. And it's interesting because obviously where you and I met was at a fight gym, you know, bloodline yeah. gym in Clapton. Mm-hmm. And that is a, that's a sort of place of like where I think I've certainly exercised a lot of demons and I've sort of Mm -hmm. um, discovered things about myself and, um, you know, had these like internal battles of where maybe like, maybe compassion is lacked or maybe, but you know, pride has taken place and things like this. And you've sort of proved something to yourself proved some sort of self worth or some sort of grit or some sort of perseverance or some sort of like, lack of complacency by even turning up there you know when you really 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 can't be fucked and then but how sometimes i feel how i need to talk to myself in order to get that out of me does lack compassion yeah (laughs) and that's the dichotomy of it it's just like and sometimes you know there's certain instructors there who are incredible and sometimes it it it's with less of a soft touch you know 
And sometimes yeah. that's how people respond. And so, certainly sometimes that's how we respond better to our own voice. I think like it's such an interesting thing, you know, it's, and it's such a delicate thing to be like, okay, what do you want for yourself? Broadly, happiness, you know, peace. What does that look like? And where where is that destination and how is that achieved? And is it being gentle on yourself? Is it being compassionate? Is it championing wellness and self-love mm -hmm. and self-care? And does that look like a soft touch? And does that look like taking an afternoon off and da 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 or whatever it is you need to just feel good? Or is it a harder touch? Is it um fractionally less compassion? And is it a bit more of a authoritative internal voice? to push you to uncomfortable lengths, to have you arrive at a destination that you never would have had you not have pushed yourself that hard and lacked that compassion. And then, yeah. but also mentally, where does that leave you? Physically, where does that leave you? Where does that leave yeah. your relationship with your partner or your friendship or your family? Or where does that leave your ability to hold dialogues and, and show up for those around you when on this like thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. I would say, <laughs> Those two sides of the coin is probably what I've been battling last few years. Yeah. With bidding levels of success. Yeah, dude. I mean, you've smashed it, obviously. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, we're going to get into the journey of how you got to where you got to and the adversities you've faced along the way. But you can see how your experiences through whether it just be turning up a bloodline or just or like having a heavy madness on a on set or whatever it is you know it all makes you are the person you are today right and of the kind of you you're so self-aware that it's admirable you know i love the way you kind of speak you speak to yourself so to say and understand where that you know i mean you can help yourself a little bit more so to be nice and then the work benefits from that right and muay thai benefits from that everything benefits from that um from that internal kind of like dialogue like you said um i love it bro it's infectious. So with that said, I'm going to take it right back to the start and understand how you've got these thought patterns <laughs> and go ahead like this today. Um, so you, you stud did you study in Aberdeen? You're from Aberdeen, isn't it? I'm from um, Aberdeen, 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 in the northeast of Scotland, born in Aberdeen. Um, and what did you do? What, well, after leaving school, what, made, what did you go to college after school? I left school and I went straight into uh, art school. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay, yeah. Straight from school into art school, <clears throat> Grey School of Art in Aberdeen. I was uh, sort, of, <laughs> sort of didn't have to get up and go about myself at that age enough to even look into other art schools or, like, apply for other shit. Like, I didn't really have, like, I guess at that time, uh, I wouldn't say... I think directionless is a too severe term, but but I feel like I knew what I was less likely to pursue. Like in Aberdeen, the lion's share of people work in the industries that are provided to you. So oil, oil, oil and gas is a big one, you know, and sort of uh, the supporting industries around that. So that so business business degrees and whatnot are encouraged, but and working offshore was always something that we grew up around. Uh, my dad worked offshore, both my brothers work in and around oil and gas. Like, and there's good money to be made doing that, you know, and a lot of people I know do that. But as I was coming up, I never really, I just didn't see it for myself, you know, and my mum was very creative. My mum went to the same art school as me, actually. So that was sort of a path. What did your mum do? do? She went to the same art school as me back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did like no jewelry way, design and whatnot. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, nice. Um, so that, so it was funny. It was like with my old man and my old dear. It was like, well, you could go and work in oil and gas, like everyone does, like your dad does, or you yeah. could pursue something a bit more creative, like I did back in the day. Da da da. And so yeah. it was literally like two sides of the coin, and I'm like, well. I've, I don't see myself doing this, despite <laughs> the chance of making good money. So fuck it, I'll do this thing. No, I wasn't. It wasn't so much fuck. I'll do this thing. I was like, oh, I, you know, I coming up. I was always making stuff. I was always like drawing or designing or building shit. I would just stay in my garage, like building like skateboard ramps and whatever, like you know, just making stuff. So that to be creative and to see like a result 
or like an end work or some sort of expression always um it was always something i was interested to you know just fucking about by yourself and then just coming up with you know just seeing the outcome of your work in front of you mm-hmm. it's always something i've uh i've always connected with so when it came to being like cool what do you want to do with yourself as like well i'll go and do this I'll go to this art school mm-hmm. D- didn't even necessarily know at that time what it was i wanted to do i hadn't been you know i hadn't really spent any time really with cameras i grew up solidly solidly glued to music television though like yeah yeah like mtv mtv2 gonzo like i was just stuck on it like day in day out i would just watch music television i was like fuck it'd be cool to do that you know <laughs> like so yeah, it's man. funny it's it's like it's funny that like that is now what i do um but but yeah, I guess I didn't growing up in the circumstance I grew up in, mm. getting from there to where I am now. Yeah. We just like was no there's just no there was no there was no clear path for that. There was no guidance for that, do you know what I mean? And there was no inclination. I didn't even like to it's yeah, it's just worlds apart. It's worlds apart. Yeah. yeah. So but art school I did a course in fine art called photographic and electronic media, which had elements of photography in it, elements of, you know, you were given cameras, you were able to sort of explore them. It wasn't really a technical course or anything. I left with a first class honours and didn't even know how to expose a photo. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just couldn't, like, I couldn't, I couldn't have, like, taken a photo and it looked shit. I couldn't have told you how to correct that. So it shows you that, like, it was more like it was a conceptual thing. It was like, you know, but it really screwed my head on with, um, giving me an awareness of what certain things say and what, mm-hmm. you know, what you're speaking about when you use a certain medium, when you, why is this offensive and to who? Why is this, what is this representing? Why is, you know what I mean? Like you need to have a accountability over what you're talking about and awareness of what that is. And prior to that, I had none of that, you know, just this little yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, went to art school, they graduated there and then sort of, was fed up being like skint. Mm-hmm. I was earning a lot of friends, we were earning nice money. I was fed mm-hmm. up being skint one. So I cut about Aberdeen and I worked some part time jobs to try to get some money. And then eventually, um, yeah, it was eventually, 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 uh, I got put in touch with one of my good friends, Scott Forrest. He'd be booking uh, DJs. He was a promoter, he'd be booking DJs back in the day. And so we'd shoot his nights. And that was my uh, first sort of um, oh, nice. step into working with artists, working in live music and working, uh-huh. uh, working in that respect. And that actually was like, you know, very much led into what I ended up doing when I came to London. Yeah. So, but previous to this, Ricky, I'd noticed like nine years ago, you was already playing around with the camera. I saw that you recorded some stuff in an M- MMA gym in Aberdeen, put together like a bit of a show reel. So, what sort of stage? What sort of stage was you doing? Was you doing this? Was this like play? Were you being paid to do this, or was this when you was like exploring with with a uh, camera? That was, yeah, that was uh, Aber- Aberdeen Combat Centre. Yeah, yeah, Aberdeen Combat Centre. They're good guys. Um, they've done tremendously well for themselves, actually. But that was, um, that was, what, nine years ago? So I came down here 10 years in May, wow. this approach in May. So I think that was like, would have been, at that time, I would have done a few music videos. I've got, fr- you know, some close friends and bands back up the road. It was really my experience at that point. Aberdeen, uh, it's a super small city, yeah. and so at that point, I was just trying to make anything happen that I could. So it was like, who has a band? Who is not even a model, but who's comfortable on camera? Who mm-hmm. might have a cocktail bar? Who might have a clothes shop? And who, you know, what possible business model is there that might require some sort of like video? Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to push for that. Yeah, I'm trying to exhaust these. Um, exhaust connections and that and the thing is it's really nice when you start out especially in Aberdeen because it's like all like small places and this is maybe like a good 
a good note for anyone who's in slightly more off the beaten track. It's like, I found that at Stone's Throw, I had such a support network. Or I, I'd like, you know, someone had like a location we could use, a da -da 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 -da, you know? And I felt quite like it was, I was able to make things and make things happen based on just like the connections I had from growing up. I remember reading a, there was like a Shane Meadows quote or something, and he was like talking about how the fuck you make your first film. And he's just like, cast your friends, you know, like pull in favors, use your family, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, <laughs> it's funny, because even 10 years ago at that point, what you're talking about, Michael, things haven't really changed. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, Christian, you know about this. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, you just sort of really, I've never really stopped casting my friends or pulling in favours, I think. like. Um, Do you find it's easier to direct friends than people that you don't know? No, I wouldn't <laughs> say that's true. Because it, w what is, I sort of work with friends, I have always worked with friends in various capacities, in various businesses, starting from Scott, way back when shooting like Felix the House Cat, Tuna DJs and whatever else we're doing back in the day. And then laterally, you know, any any friends that come in for castings or that, that we've roped in or people even on crew. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then now working with different businesses with different friends, you know, it's like it, it does blur lines, you know, you gotta wear various hats at once. And especially from a directorial capacity to a casting capacity. Mm-hmm. If someone is coming in on board and their relationship to you is they've been, they're not maybe not from a performance background, but they're doing it as a favor. You're already working with like, there's like a, there's like a, there's almost like, I don't know, there's like a moral limit to how much you can push that. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I think you've got to understand this person's a person doing a thing to help this build, make this thing you're trying to do. And so with that, there's like, well, okay, well, what's your what's your capacity that I can push that without it, you know, causing detriment to our friendship, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's it's sometimes easier working with. I mean, like, I love working with people anyway. I'm, I'm I sort of like to think of myself as a, as a as a people person, but I think the easiest thing to work with regards to any casting is just people who are willing. And that could be friends or it could be strangers. It could be anyone. Do you know what I mean? I think if someone is like game for it and just like wants to play and explore and is happy to take direction and happy to sort of be vulnerable in that moment, it's an yeah. absolute concern for me because it's like I can, I feel I can do great stuff with that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. God, Jesus Christ, isn't it? I mean, I've not done any audition other than that thing where I've got it. I've sent it to the guys so we can pull it up later. And we can show it later. And um, we will. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Michael, do we do it? Do I pull it off? Do we do it? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm looking forward to seeing that because well, I've, I've seen like a bit of it, but uh, well, I just saw it before, so now we get the context of who you're supposed to be playing and in, in, in which yeah, video. Yeah. Right, okay, That's yeah, cool. yeah. Um, um, you are. One thing I wanted to ask Ricky is like going back then, you mentioned about um, recording bands, you mentioned about recording like DJ sets, and obviously, I've seen like your most current work all sound like very different genres it, do you just have like a love for music across like the scale or do you, do you have um yeah like a specific genres that you prefer to work in i think um i think through over the last decade or so maybe a bit more i think it's that i've worked amongst different um different genres but also in different capacities uh, and that's been circumstantial towards the access I've had in different cities. Mm. It's it's been um, circumstantial towards the sort of the role I had at that point. You know, when I was first starting out taking uh, live photography and live sort of videography back then, it was working within what was being booked in the city, which was you know bigger DJs and that you know little house and bits and pieces like that. And that was the sort of club nights. Even you know back back in the day, like you know first ever shooting gigs like shooting like you know in like clubs mm -hmm. it was just what there was available and sometimes you are a beggar mercy of what is available in your um environment do you know what i mean yeah. which is why it's uh which is why when i did move down here almost 10 years ago now it felt so exciting because i was at the beggar mercy of a far bigger pool of opportunity far greater pool of 
artists a higher quality of you know art just happening and so it felt like okay this is all for the taking you know you can do anything you want to and um i definitely felt when i leaving aberdeen was a moment where i felt i was my only limitation then you know whereas sometimes when you have limited means to make things happen or there's maybe like less of a um an industry somewhere you're working against you're working sort of like against the grain or there's a lot of uphill battles even trying to get like equipment you might, might want or support you might want and moving from Aberdeen to London I was like cool if there's anything that I nothing is out of reach now mm -hmm. only your own lack of getting it that's uh -huh. you know, how I felt and that was quite liberating but to get back to your point once I moved down here I worked less within dance music and more within, um, yeah, hip hop and rap, mm -hmm. uh, shooting, shooting live shows for some of the biggest artists in the world, um, and that is still sort of the capacity in which I work with. But but now because I'm directing more and writing more, uh, the I'm working with a lot more UK artists, some mm -hmm. very close friends, some incredible artists, some independent, you know, a lot of independent artists. And I think what I'm able to respond to in a, in a directorial capacity compared to shooting um, uh, live shows, I, I feel I can get my teeth stuck into different things in different ways, you know? Yes. Yeah. When, um, when shooting live shows, it's amazing responding to crowd energy. It's, it's amazing, you know, responding to the artist energy and different types of genres within that, you know? But when I'm trying to put pen to paper to sort of develop a concept for a for a music video or or something within that world, I like to. I think I react to to, to the substance within the you know certainly the like the lyrical content and the sentiments expressed in that you know so that maybe I'm able to explore different genres within that you know. Yeah, yeah. too can like completely different worlds aren't they obviously you know capturing a live event you're capturing you, yeah. you want to try and capture the moment the atmosphere the best possible um in the world of directing you, you're trying to capture i guess a specific person and add your twist and flavor to it um, well it's like it's it's funny because like that one was where i'm from and one is where i'm working now but they're both telling stories and yeah. that's what, that's why i found out i'm I had a, like a, this itch to move into directing because even though I was being put in a situation previously of like <laughs> very little preparation, very little warning, very little support and just being lumped in this situation of being like, cool, make something fucking cool. Yeah. I would still, it couldn't get away from trying to tell some sort of story with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I was always trying to make like a, like a, like a narrative even out of like a night you know and so i kept thinking i just do what i tell stories i do what i tell stories and i don't i don't didn't feel the context i was in at that point was allowing me control to do that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i feel I like at that time as well when you're recording the live shows that's when i'm i'm assuming you worked with a lot of the names which are in your bio um yeah. you know, i just wanted to ask like who did, did you have any sort of like special encounters with any of those people is it any sort of crazy stories to tell us <laughs> yeah, <let's try. laughs> you're filming with people like gigs and um and drake like it's you know it'd be good to get a moment with any of these people yeah yeah what can i say <laughs> I can imagine like Post Malone. Do you get do you get much time with them like Post Malone and that? Like, do you get time to sit with them and rub shoulders Post with them? A really nice guy. I can imagine he is, lad. He, yeah. when, we, when we shot when we shot him, he had so few songs out that he had had to play White Iverson like two or three times. Yeah, like he only had about four songs, and he got booked in this show. Uh, Semtex put him on in this show in a uh, birthdays in Dalston. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking packed out sweaty I only got four <laughs> songs and he's just like that's all my songs so do you want white everson again he just fucking played it a few times and just like <laughs> Oh, 
Post Malone debut show in the UK, debut arrival now. How do you feel? Yeah. I'm a SoundCloud rapper. Yeah, he just went, but you know, he's an amazing artist and by all accounts, uh, extremely lovely guy in real life. We shot um, Vince Staples, who was like one of my, you know, favorite artists. I shot him on my birthday. Uh, that was, at, uh, ah, what's that place called again? The like shite place in Dol uh, short it's is shut now. It was like a total student, like, 20 mm -hmm. quid a bevy type place in Shoreditch. I can't remember what it's called now. It's shut. It doesn't matter. It's It wasn't a venue I'd ever really been at, but it was there. Vince Staples on my birthday, which was a nice one. Yeah. The Koji Radical was supporting, and yes. even uh, House of Pharaohs were supporting. Yeah. They were super young at that point, which is like Sam Wise and them lot. Um, but it was nice, man. And Vince Staples is one of these people that's like, his interviews are like, so so magnetic you know the way he talks and the way he's forthcoming the way he uh takes time to to just chat with people and that was one of those moments it was really nice to just sort of share a prolonged moment most artists are you know a lot of them already dip straight after the show and he just like hung out and talked and just like yeah it was a really nice moment man uh quite like a yeah nice heart heartwarming Heartwarming mm -hmm. moment on my birthday with like one of my favorite oh, artists. That's cool. There's um, a. <laughs> I would love to tell you some more about some of those. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sort of. Uh, I, I've. I've signed NDAs and I'm not sure what that. <laughs> Oh, guys. Come on. I can't, I can't, I, I don't really fall print of these things. And I, and I <laughs> say no more. Um, <laughs> on, on the flip of that then, so obviously, you know, I mean, the music that you listen to growing up and the music that you listen to now, how does, how does that then transcend into films that you watch? Do you, who do you look to as film directors in the film world that inspire you, so to say, or you kind of take from visually? Hmm. You know, is like, is it a certain genre of films or a certain director, or is it, you know, what I mean, a wide spectrum of? Say that again, regarding music. Yeah, so like flipping from music, you know, what I mean, itself as like the thing. Obviously, then for directing video and film, is there any film directors, i.e., obviously your Tarantino, your Wes Andersons for your colours? Is there anyone you look to? That inspires you within that world, or is there a certain kind of, I don't know, like for us, like for instance, when we're in a, when we're in a bit of a rut, say creatively on a project, trying to come up with a fucking, well, I don't know, whatever the subject, whether it be a logo, or whether it be whatever, but, um, we obviously have our little methods to try to get the clarity or the things that we go to to take inspiration from. So it might be a gallery and looking at stuff that's visual, going, you know what I mean, going for a walk or like picking up a book, whatever it may be. That is just someone that you look to when you're in a visual kind of a visual brick wall, so to say, and you're like, sugar, what can I, like how can I make this bit pop or you know? Am I make, am I making sense? You are making sense. You are making sense. I just thought it was adorable that you said sugar. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what, in moments of like mental block, which there, you know, which there have been an abundance of, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't, or maybe this is to my detriment, but I don't, I don't look, I don't look externally for inspiration. I don't look, I don't look at the directors. I mean, like someone whose work I do, I love, you know, P.T. Anderson, like, I feel yeah. for me is like someone just like, yeah, another level. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, and I guess like you know the humor and the the fucking darkness and the bleakness. It's just like that is something that I like connects with me deeply. It's just mm -hmm. this like yeah, just a wry humor and a, uh, uh, <laughs> just mixing the salt with sweet. It's something that I like. I really resonate with. You, do you know what I mean? If you can make something that's fucking dark as fuck, but also super funny without it being like something that's humorous without it being comedy yeah and something that's really dark and really touching and really challenging to watch you know what i mean 
yeah, I love yeah. that. I love that. I love sort of films and even art, you know, music, whatever things that aren't just instantly, um, yeah. instantly understandable as one thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm watching a comedy. Oh, oh, I'm watching a horror. You know, shit that pulls you different ways and like has you questioning how you do feel about it. Yeah, that's something that I um that I seek to sort of create myself. You know, but I, and I think in moments of um moments of mental block i think i i think i trust that the clarity is inside me do you know what i mean and it's just about accessing that because i've had moments where i've in life prolonged moments where i felt ultra clear and ultra on it and ultra focused and i've like when you talk about being like a, um like a receiver for things do you know what i mean it's like you know the idea of that you know when you when you're creating art it's not you creating art it's like you know you are like this fucking mm-hmm. what is it like an antenna or receiver i can't tell but like something's coming through you it's coming out through you do you know what i mean mm-hmm. an idea that's like you know you're being inspired by, by something bigger than yourself not necessarily someone else's direct you know so, like art in front of you cool i like that i'll do something similar to that but like something's coming through you and i think i think that does exist inside you do you know what i mean in, in a more abstract way than like just directly looking at art and having that sort of feed in sometimes that does help it's like what what do you two feel um what do you feel inspires you when you're in your moments of blockages do you think it's like or, or how do you, you unblock those blockages it's interesting because like i feel like a lot we were talking about it last week um i don't know if the pod will come out before this one does or not but when we did our internal chat michael and um it is like um internal chat just a chat between us but um it's loads of people so serious <laughs> it's it's really really serious business meeting <laughs> it's um loads of people within like design always say like i'll get fucking post clarity of a shower you know i'll go and stand in the shower for time time or go and fucking stoke a random dog in a park or do anything that's book design and um, i don't know I, I don't really know what i do i think martial arts helps because that's the place where consciously i stop thinking about everything do you know what mm. i mean um my mate as well you know because like, i go there and i don't have the time to think so i come out of there and i think that the high every episode we've done now i've ended up talking about martial arts i don't want to, i don't want to, i don't want it to be about martial arts as such but the what i gained from that clarity wise and michael can relate to he's still he's exactly the same i think especially i think i speak for both of us coming out there you have a new found um just energy to go sometimes you know like you can be so kerfuffled when it gets cloudy up top but i don't have a specific goal to in a way like i just i go if anything i've got the confidence over time like you've just said and that only comes from experience of being able to shut the fucking mark and do that other thing that you're not thinking about doing, you know what I'm saying or whatever. Because um, I remember when I first started and I, like in, in the industry, you know, in design and like, I'd never shut the lid. If I was stuck on a project, I wouldn't leave. I'd feel like I was being, uh, you know what I mean? I was complacent almost if, if I left my desk, say, and did that walk or whatever else. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't have a direct, but I think martial arts helps. That'd be my yeah. answer. I know you. I know you don't want to make it martial arts focused, but I think it is that whole like what what do you do for well, the training? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, what what do you do that takes your head away from things? Exactly, isn't it? Which is things yeah. like yeah, martial arts. It's running. It's it's training. Yeah, it's spending time with family. It's all these different things. I think are, are different gateways or escapes. I guess. Yeah. Uh, one thing that you do really good, Christian, which. I I really I really enjoy especially like working when I've been working with you, which I do a lot more now is I just stop looking at what's on my screen, just stop staring at the same fucking thing and just yeah, open yeah. the file and look at a fresh white yeah. screen yeah. board and start working again and go somewhere completely different. And um, between that, the same project, yeah, say if it's the same project, mm-hmm. step away and just start afresh and. And be a lot more looser, and I, you know, I think that's something that you're really good at, Christian. And I, I think when you do that, you tend to find something new, which is really powerful, or you it actually makes you realise that what you've already got was really good. And I, I think because we're always in this, I guess, struggle for the the perfect idea, the the perfect way, the perfect execution. 
um, sometimes, you know, you've got those free ideas. Like, I guess the way we usually work is we've got those free concepts that you're going to present, but we're always pushing to see, like, what is what is the other better option. It might not yeah. be we're always pushing for it. Or, or if there is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think that, I think that's that crossover here between what we're all looking for. I think regardless, when you have that mental block, you're looking for clarity, right? And what you're saying there, Michael, what I do is, like, for us, for context, Ricky, you know what I mean? As we're designing, you're duplicating this, you're changing this, you're changing a little bit of this, and then you're booming, and then there's another idea, and it ends up becoming a fucking car crash of an art board that you're looking at, right? And you're looking at so much shit, it can be really overwhelming, you know? Mm. So what, I, what Michael just said, then I'll just start a new document, and I'll just pick up the bits that I feel are valuable. No iterations, you know what I mean? No nothing. It's like, right, what we're looking now. And it allows you to stand back on it and understand what you've really got so like when you're in that process say of coming up with a concept for a music video um whether you're writing it or it's the kind of like um the script to direct it how do you approach the cutting phase because i can imagine even with like the murkish day video that we're going to talk about later i remember the 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 intro was longer right and it had to get cut mm. originally so how do you essentially kill your babies so like, how do you, you know what I mean? You have this beautiful written dialogue and things like that. How do you then start cutting and add, uh, like adding clarity in that way? In the same way as we do is like starting a new art board. What's your new art board in a way, if that makes sense? Do you know what? That, that process, right, is something that you need to fucking, you need to learn how to be objective with your yeah, yeah. For, so, for, yeah. For, for, until you know very 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 recently I've, I've always edited my own work and sometimes you can be quite so close to the work that it's difficult to be objective about like is this yeah, sure. not necessary does this yeah. provide something or is it just more like um more like stuff you know Mm -hmm. and like there, there's there's an art to like selective reduction it's like what's the how much fat can you trim without causing detriment to the whole thing you know mm -hmm. and a good example of that is the, uh at art school the first like film project that were like cool here's a camera make a thing make a film or whatever just do, do whatever you fancy you can do just do something in the medium of fucking film and i had to we had to we got put in little groups and it was myself a good friend, Rich Watson and Doug Allen. And the only thing you advise is like, well, we're in, we'll maybe enter these into short film competitions, but they only look at shit that's like seven minutes and under. So keep that in mind. We wrote this fucking film. I wrote this film called Beige. And it was just like an offbeat sort of, uh, you know, awkward love film or something like that. But... <laughs> And not at one point did I ever storyboard it and be like, cool, 30 seconds this happens, at 45 seconds this happens. I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote, wrote. Then we just filmed everything we wrote, stuck it together. And it was fucking like 34 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I couldn't see. I was so close to it. Because of the, I was blinded by how, the, uh, how much work we put into it and how hard it was to do it and like mm. I was so Im not impressed by what we'd done but I was so attached to each shot yeah that I couldn't uh objectively be like cool let's just fuck that yeah. whole 10 minutes off you know what I mean you need the experience don't you and or you need the, or, or, or you need, yeah yeah you you do gain that experience thankfully or you don't and you just end up making like 40 minute drivel for the rest of your life. But but that's why it's really nice working with different people who are heads of departments, who that is their own shit, people who can come and be like, now, nah, you know what? You don't need this or this is that, da, 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 you know? Yeah. And that was a really nice moment in um in my in my sort of creative journey when I started working you know, as part of a crew, you know, where I started working yeah. with, like, my director of photography or, or, you know, stylists and art directors and da 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 and, and you started, you d up until that point, I, I was trying to figure out a way how I, would, how I would take that all on myself constantly, you know? I didn't really know any otherwise. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a journey. But back to the, the Merkins Dave one and, and, and anything like that, I, th I think, you know, you working closely with artists like Dave, we sort of develop things 
together you know we sort we sort of talk and talk and talk and what shape the thing needs to be is always quite collaborative yeah for for the uslot video you know we that was like born that was born that was like a like a lockdown development we'd get together we'd shot a video prior to that with miles from kinshasa well that's a great cube let me stop you we'll pull that up now we'll have a little watch of it and then we can break it down a little bit that's a little okay little... man okay man maybe i'll try and talk a little bit more succinctly <laughs> everywhere, man. Um, before we do pull this up um it's the motions one really in the background the first one um i think it w so we just had a bit of a situation on another video where we got pulled for having um, music playing. Uh, so with this, if we uh, is there a cap? Do you know anything about the cap that we can show? Are we good to show this? What I believe from my time working in, uh, uh, yeah, uh, with in the videography as a young pup, I think it's 30 seconds. I think I think you can do little 30 second bites and it should be grand. Any more than that becomes tricky. Let's do this. Let's do, let's pull it up for 30 seconds, Lewis. And then if you've got any time spots that you remember in your head <laughs> that you wanted to go to visually. Um, Me? Yeah, if you, I don't know if you do, do you know what I mean? But just if you did, you know, but we'll just start it from the beginning. Yeah, the beginning is a good place to start. I mean, if, I can I can run it. I don't know if it'll be. What do you have pulled? Uh, what on this? What have you previously had pulled, and how? Uh... Oh right, it was um, it was thingy, weren't it, My, Michael? It, it uh, on Daniel's on his um, on his uh, the, what was it? Post office stuff, wasn't it? For Royal Mail, it was it's coming yeah. on. Back, it's coming on. It's coming on. It's oh coming no, on. I, th I think yeah. I think that would be, yeah, we should be fine there. Yeah, sweet. Hey, Lewis. I'm going to say we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> timing she wanna know what i'm running from where man's hiding i did a bad thing yesterday but more time girl you know that i'm good still the bad thing that i did will get written down in your book now you got me dashing dashing to the station we still need a conversation not gonna stand here like a lemon and take it i know i snitched on myself man i crashed a ferrari into my laptop well, stop us there, Lewis. God, I told you, bro i love it um right go on take, talk us about the concepts of it first before we get into it into it like so this was um this was at a time where i was trying I was pushing to do more music videos and get more just connect with more artists and i'd been in touch with um my director of photography and frequent collaborator Josh Fry, who's an yeah. amazing, yeah, an amazing DOP, very, very talented at what he does. And uh, so he put me in touch with Miles, and um, he was looking for a music video, and it was like a height of lockdown, it was maybe like 2020. And so, you know, Miles was an independent artist, he had a limited budget, and um, but he had this great track. Mm -hmm. Uh, super catchy track produced by Kadia, who's also in the, uh, the video, who's a superstar and an amazing producer. They work together frequently, you know, and, you know, they're both artists that uh, Marcus Dave had also worked with in the past or, you know, you know, was moving in similar circles. I hadn't met Dave at this point. Okay. So 
so I had an abundance of time and uh, I was sort of, at that point, I found like I was, for the first time in my life, I was very connected to something that was authentic to myself, which was just like actually not feeling that I couldn't use humor. Yeah. I couldn't use my personality and I couldn't explore like awkwardness and, uh, you know, all the things that we were feeling like disconnect at that point, you know, separation. Like I think that was like just as things were opening up a little bit from like full on lockdown and the idea of even like how to be social and how to be around people and that sort of like breakdown and just like being, there was just this, like, I felt like an inability of like my social battery and my ability to even engage with folk has just gone out the fucking window. And so we sort of lent into that. You know, and again, I always respond from the, to the lyrics. I always like, you know, take a sentiment and just roll with it, you know? Yeah. And so that was one of these tracks that we just did that. And because we had such limited means, it's one of these good, uh, it's one of these good examples. I think for me, that's like, when you're given like some sort of tight parameter to explore under, you you end up having it you end up potentially choosing something more creative than you would have had you had all the means and all the time to do so i feel urgency sometimes provides that and also like your limitations provide that you know um so because we didn't have a great amount of money for it you know because we had to have like a single location because we couldn't really involve camera movements and things like that and we had limited amount of people to use i thought well what can this this concept initially began as just even more simple than it was. It was just gonna be Dave and Miles like side eyeing each other the entire time with like sheets of subtitles. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, how far can we put how far can we strip it back and how much can we remain uh engaging with f- very, very, very little happening, you know? And I think it's those little details that's like it's fun to play with, you know, and these two, like Kadia, uh, Dave, Miles, even Jen, who played um, uh, the the girl, the girlfriend's friend, you know, she's a close friend. Again, it's just like everyone was, you know, such a natural performers, you know, and it's I love exploring uh, dialogue just through like just. Uh, facial expression you know and it was just this one this was the first iteration of like me really getting a chance to do that you know um but so i wrote this thing miles was like this is amazing would you like we need to make this i was like cool hold tight let me just see how we get this done you know and so by hook or by crook i mean i'm writing it produced it directed it got some very willing friends to come on board as crew lend us some kit managed to get a local restaurant paid them a bit you know i'm miles and i went to uh we hadn't met before we went to vicky park and sat and i we ran through this like this is what you're going to be doing da, 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 da. we sat at this table and i was just like went through all his bits from us i just think i hadn't met dave before i was like just think we'll get a rehearsal with dave He's like, nah, nah, we won't get a rehearsal with Dave. He's a bit busy, but we'll see him on the day. So I was like, fuck. Okay, let's just do that then. Da, da, da. And then so the day came and, you know, Josh was there. He was getting set up. Like my friend Jamie Corn was gaffing. Uh, Martin Senenshack came down with some of his kit. Just like good people who are supporting my creativity. And it's like never be, it's something that I never get over. It's just like that it's always a byproduct of love and support and friends and family that make like these things happen, especially at this stage when it's like really, really difficult to make something that's going to stand out uh, for the budgets that are available for the, for the means that people do have. It's like, how do you make something that you give a fuck about and other people will give a fuck about as well? So we got down there on the day and it's fucking roasting hot. It's boiling and everyone's masked up still and everyone's doing like the fever gun thing and like you know we had to put big blackout over the window to cheat day for night and it was just like that this sweat box so it was like you know <laughs> it was like this like semi-stressful environment 
But anyway, Dave walks in and I was like, cool, do you know what you're doing? He's like, no, not really. He's like, cool, sit down. And I handed him the script and like sort of, the, the, you know, the beats and everything he's doing. And we sat and there was a really nice photo of him and I sitting across the table from one another. And I'm sort of like, you know, doing this and he's doing this as well, you know, and it's just this moment like talking about this moment when he sees his ex, you know, and the, us both getting it. He's like, who wrote this? And I was like, I did. He goes, yeah, I really fucking like it. And then he smashed it. Miles smashed it. Dave smashed it. Kadia smashed it. And it was just like came across as this really quite a simple idea, but um, due to everyone's just like inherent uh, nature as perf as performers, it just uh, like you know I'm really happy with how it came out in the end, and it, that really gave me the confidence to be like, cool. This feels like a world in which I want to explore. This tone of voice, mm -hmm. this level of humor. And also just like, you know, I guess it's, I end up through no intention, just time and time again, writing these like awkward love stories. And I guess that's maybe it says more about me than anything <laughs> else, but that was the first, the first time I think I connected with the, you know, the tone of it. And I thought, yeah, this is, this feels like me. So yeah. that was a nice moment, you know? Yeah, lovely. I think it's great, lad. Appreciate it. I, I love the uh, <clears throat> the sort of double narrative that you get. Obviously, you get the subtitle in as well. Yeah. And it's, like you said before, if you went with that first idea where it was quite heavily subtitled, it, it could have conflicted. I'm not too sure, but just the way it is now, it's just so simple and clean. And you're following, you're sort of following both these narratives. Um, and I, I love the, like you said, going back to the sort of facial expressions that, that you feel that make a lot of the action work. It's got this uh, sort of like slapstick humor to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's wicked, man. I, th I think like, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at how people actually communicate in life, which is interesting, because for me, it was like a first like exploration into dialogue, full stop, even though it's super, super limited. Mm -hmm. I was like, how do people talk? And it's not like, you know, it's like if you're close to people and if you if you've got your you know, your boys or whatever, and like you're you it's you can say a hundred words in a little glance, you know? Yeah. yeah. I used to play in a band when I was younger back in Aberdeen and we practiced so much that like we could like yeah. have like we could just a little glance and you'd know exactly what was you know what needed to happen next or someone to stop or someone to come in and you know, it'd be like a little and there's just lovely sort of synergy that you can have that you have when you're close with people and i feel like i really want to explore that and how much like under the, the gaze of the one person you're trying not to alert how much of a conversation can we have about them in front of them and it's just like funny i, I, I enjoy putting characters in um compromising situations and seeing how they get out of it that for me is like it tickles me you know what i mean yeah. it's sort of a uh yeah it's like there's a there's a there's a it's like a comedy and tragedy, you know, and like even if it's not like tragic, it's like I just love exploring relatable, awkward shit because it's like you know it's something everyone can connect with. I think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, it feels real, in it. You know, mm -hmm. it's got a nice realness, to it, um, a nice relatableness to it. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't feel too that far, like kind of detached. Um, yeah, indeed. You know. Um, nice, Ricky. That's it. Let's keep the momentum. Uh, let's pull up the second one. I think that's a nice build off this too. Do you know what I mean? Um, Lewis, if you don't mind pulling. That was a no that was a good thirty seconds, weren't it? That first one then that we pulled up. Um, if you can pull up, don't be an op. A hard track these as well, lad. <laughs> Amazing track again. Yeah. Produced by Kadia. So has this got a similar budget? Is this a similar kind of like circumstance to the first one where you had to like kind of make compromises or has it got a bigger budget? Don't be an op is so close to my heart, man, because it is almost like uh, an evolution of how what had to happen to make the first one, and but a way bigger scale, you know. Mm -hmm. This is an absolute product of friends like loved ones like everyone just pulling together to make something that's like way bigger than you know it should have been 
for what we had. And also, like, all the cast, our friends, you know, were, like, friends of mine or the artists or people who were just willing to come and, like, you know, be part of this thing. And th this was, like, this took months and months and months, actually. And it was... It was a real a real slog to to get done you know i think um for, for how limited the crew was and for how limited the support we had to do it the few people that were involved in making it happen just like it's just wild you know and um we shot this down in pimlico which is on the estate where miles and caddia both live you know so it was a real it's a beautiful place but it was, a, it was a real authentic setup, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, yeah, it just uh, when I wrote this, I thought sometimes when I'm pitching on music videos, you've maybe only got like a day or two to turn something around and show it to a label, and you really only need to be putting together like a top line. It's got to be punchy, you know. Otherwise, you know this yourself with design and like when you're working with copy, something we you and I talk about a lot. It's like someone doesn't need an essay, you know, so they just need a, something that's going to catch them. But for this, in order to get my head around what I want to do, I had to write this as a script, you know, as a sort of screenplay. And in order, to, in order to get my head on all the interactions were happening on screen, I had to develop these like side characters as their own characters. So everyone had names, everyone had backgrounds, everyone had relationships with one another, everyone had their nuances, their tendencies. Did they have short tempers? Were they like, uh, a mother figure in the neighborhood where they, you know, who looked up to who, who was like the one you'd call on if there was like shit going down, do you know what I mean? And and then because I was able to develop the characters in such a way, I then give these like full on backstories to the people who were coming on board. Everyone was so um, appreciative that they weren't just like, Joe, come and just stand in the background of a video. It's like, fuck, I get to embody this character. Yeah. yeah. allowed them to then do that with, very little, um, some of them very little performing experiences that were just game for trying shit out. Heavenly, who's on screen right now, absolutely smashed it. She looks hard. <laughs> She's good, man. I get like all, all the cast, like Lindy, who plays uh, 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 Caddy as sort of ex, sort of like estranged bow in it. She's like an amazing actress, an amazing model, and she's in it. She's in Cape Town now. She's from South Africa, but she was, she was one person that. She's a good friend of mine and one person who I'd be sharing these ideas with uh, as I was writing them. So she was very close to, to all these ideas developing. And I'm like, well, listen, we need to work together. We need to work together. So she, she was even across that Miles one, uh, this one as well. And eventually we managed to work out, you know, she, she was able to be in this one. So she, to get her on board as well was incredible. But um, yeah, this one was like phew, a, a difficult, a difficult, difficult one to pull off for such a scale and so many moving parts. And it was a time when like COVID was still popping off quite a bit. So like, you know, Miles got COVID, we had to postpone, Caddy, I got COVID. The movement director, Demi, who's amazing, she, she got COVID as well. I got COVID. So we kept having to push it off and push it off and push it off and push it off, which ironically allowed it time to sneak in another little rehearsal here or to for me to, to have calls with each of the castings and really go through like what they had to do and where they were so people were like it afforded us the time to really flesh it out and for people to really sink into their their roles sometimes that you might not have been afforded if we we're working because miles was independent you know there was that sort of like uh that uh, acknowledgement of like let's just make this fucking great whereas yeah. sometimes if if a label has a um a stricter turnaround time or a stricter schedule they're working to it's like no we're shooting next week and just whatever is done in that week is where it's going to be whereas this got longed out so much due to no um due to circumstances out of our hand that it actually allowed us to flesh it out and to develop it to what it needed to be and yeah i'm incredibly proud i'm so so proud of it nice yeah. Lewis, hit play on it for us, please, bro. Nice bit of type as well. We can fly out.
to let go So quite land up The choice is yours But you act up Like you eat so Baby keep calm Don't be alone Don't be alone Don't I've been on too long November's too cold But your dress is froze Only get that real love That real love from the bros don't want another winter alone Then mama pick up the phone Is that what, is that what you're on? We can make a big budget movie or bro So pat that shakini you're sitting on I don't want Why must you rock the boat? All the time, but if you want, you can take a toll. Baby, I'm just a man, it's not. Yeah, man, just like Miles and Kadia, like they need, they need their own show, man. Yeah, dude, they're sick. just they're such incredible actors, and they just to, take to take to direction. They're so willing to be like, yeah. Uh, but when yeah. I'm like, ah, he's sick, like then the vibing in the car, bro. That's, I can that's, imagine yeah. you. I can yeah. imagine you. I can imagine you working with it. You know what I mean? And getting in the red with it. Do you know what? It's a shame because like Demi Rocks, who's the who's the choreographer on this, she, she she developed this whole thing. We had this whole routine down for when they're in that car, and it's this like synchronized thing that's happening. But again, and this is something that that i it's going back to that initial film i made i made at art school that was like 35 minutes long what i more time would do is i'd write an abundance of narrative and i would and i would i would mm-hmm. neglect to sort of think like the track's three minutes long and all of this needs to share a screen you know oh, you know when is it all gonna fit and in order to allow the story to come through, we actually had to, to not show as much of that in-car dance as we would have liked to, because it was amazing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And go, going back to the connection of um, uh, of sort of people's actions and faces, just the little the little look they give each other when they go, the bros, and they just touch they just touch each other down. Like, it's... You've, you've, Feel that there's been a connection there already. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's just it's all the tiny little nuances. It's really nice, Ricky. It's the little details. Yeah, yeah. You can also you can also see now, like, look even just looking at them two videos that you've done, um, you can see how your kind of style is there. So, like, Michael, you'll echo this when I say it, like the your colors are beautiful. You know what I mean? That kind of like gritty, great. You know what I mean? And this the kind of rawness of the color. Um, Again, it feels really lovely, bro. And if, if, is that what you're aiming to kind of start kind of utilizing now over all your videos so they sit together a little bit more? Or yeah, I mean, like for for me again, that that is definitely working with the you know the team, the frequent collaborators, Joshua Fry on director of photography, um, mm-hmm. Johnny Tully, who's a colorist, an amazing colorist. It's like it's this it's this thing that comes together. And I've said this before. It's like when I'm when I'm sort of uh, conceiving of an idea in my mind's eye if it is something that's heavily narrative i'm so i'm so like my mind's going to what's happening at a, at a base level of does the story make sense what are the what, what are the people feeling how are they corresponding to one another da, 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 da. and then to take that this like thing and show it to to josh Mm-hmm. And have his head start going cool, while he takes it and runs with it a different way, you know, yeah, nice. not a different way, but he would just put the spin on it that I would have never been able to even like think, yeah, fucking right, that of course we use that lens, or of course this is the movement, da da da, and that's such a lovely moment to get to when you're like cool. I had this, and all, and also because it's like you got to be, it's good to be ambitious, but also you have got to be realistic. So it's like cool with the money we do have, the time we do have, and the means we do have. I will always, you know, picture things in a relatively modest way. And when, and then th- going through the process of what Josh does with it and what Johnny does with it. And, it, and it's like the, the, 
it's it's so much greater than the sum of its parts once everyone's blessed it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it comes out like this, and it's like it's something I'll never get over. You know, mm-hmm. I feel very very grateful for uh, for working with the talent people for the good fortune of working with. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So how does that then? So what that moving forward with that then, net, networking wise? Um, does that start opening you up now and then build your connections to start doing similar things with different people too? Yeah, I mean, with with it within what specifically? Within the industry, and obviously, you start making these connections. How does it go? How do you go about networking and getting more work within the industry? Do you know what I mean? So, like, I'm, so you work at Code now, right? Yeah, I've been working with Code Code Media for about a year. So they, they've been supporting me on this journey, and you know, putting putting more briefs my way, yeah, and. Right. Um, that was shortly shortly after we shot this. I started started working with them, so they supported me in um in making the I guess the next video with Luca, which is Murkish Dave Osla. That was the first one we did together. Oh, this is a lovely segue, and again, Ricky, yeah. you're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, we that I mean Osla with Dave. That was one that Dave and I. Off the back of off the back of the first video we watched, Miles from Kinshasa Motions, Dave was like, "Cool, we need to like keep working." I was like, "Absolutely," you know. He was working on a project at the time, uh, "The City Needs a Hero," which is which is his you know latest record that's come out not so long ago, an amazing record, and it was he was still in the process of getting that happening, you know, recording it, finishing it off, getting it mastered and stuff like that. And we would go and we'd walk. We'd it was, it was a time in life when all you could do was link up and walk. You know what I mean? So we just spend like days and days and days walking till our legs were cold or we were hungry or you know just like knackered. And with the idea that we'd get together to to develop an idea for a music video. Uh-huh. And we chat for hours and hours and hours, and we never actually get to the music video. And that's sort of indicative of the time Dave and I spent together. So we 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 link up with a with a notion of a a specific thing, and we end up talking so broadly and exploring ideas and life and family and friends and relationships and things like that that we never get to the to the um, we never get to the uh, intended point. But what we do talk about greatly informs the intended point once we do get to it, do you know what I mean? So we ended up just like walking and walking and walking and talking about so much stuff. And I was like, right, I've got this, I've got this concept based on what we we're talking about. And I wrote us lot. He's like, this is amazing. Um let's park it for now whilst I finesse. You know, he was in talks about uh, deals and how he was going to be moving forward again, you know, you know I had to finish his record, so he was like, cool, let's park it for now and we'll come back to it when it's right. And I think a year passed, maybe a year and a half. He said, right, it's time that we need to start shooting music videos. And I was like, cool. Say less, let's try to think about how we can make this happen now, you know, because at that, at that point, I was still, I, I didn't have any support. I was, every time, every time an artist gave me the green light for an idea, I was like, hold tight and I would be fishing around producers any production company I knew, anyone who was a remote connections to production, I was like, listen, I've got this idea, there's very little money attached, the artist is amazing, can you help at all? And at that point, a lot, there was a lot of no's, people were struggling themselves, you know what I mean? Like, any production companies that did have rosters were supporting the rosters they did have, opposed to taking on external directors like myself, do you know what I mean? Especially ones with such few, such a limited uh, portfolio at the time. Um, and then... You know, I I I got uh, I started working with Code, and so they said, "Yeah, we'd love to help make it. We love Dave. We want to support you doing what you're doing." And it went through those lot, and uh, yeah, and uh, we we got we got it going, and and it was one of these things again. The same as like, don't be an op. It was something that was. It was like an something that was anchored in like connection and friendships and love and and the nuances of like th- that dynamics you know but it was something that you know d- d- anyone who knows marcus dave is like fan base is so eclectic but so so loyal and so, you know, he's got like a cult fan base and it's quite surprising it's not surprising but it's like he doesn't just appeal to like one type of 
one type of fan, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so we almost wanted to like uh to lean into that and to sort of uh give a little nod to that and portray that within a group of friends, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um and um I think how because his music is sometimes quite you know introspective and melancholic and things like that and so we you know we wanted to fuck with that idea that like i'd love to for someone because there's always like diehard fans who are trying to put people on today of folk like now allow it's like we're at a party like why are you putting on this like sad, sad sack shit do you know what i mean so we thought like let's 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 lean into that you know let's let's have this guy who's like nutted trying to like stick on your music at a party when actually like it might kill the party if he does but he's like so adamant that he's like you need to hear this shit and let's see what that does to the dynamic of the party let's see how that brings together these friends who maybe don't get together often and everyone's sort of like on their last legs at a party the party's sort of dying and let's see what it does to the friendships let's see what it does to the party and let's see how it brings people together Mm -hmm. that was a really fun thing to explore yeah, dude, I love it, lad. Um, I'm quite close to this one. Not you, are <laughs> you are indeed. And I guess that's what was nice about this one. Um, I mean, I've never really showed anyone I told anyone, but obviously, I auditioned for the Earl, innit? Um, well, you, you, you are, you are a, a cracking example of one of the the friends and loved ones who I approached, knowing. I think for this, I sort of wrote. Again, working within limited means, I'm going back to that Shane Meadows quote, it's like sometimes like I'll write things with a casting in mind. Yeah, and yeah. the castings I have in mind is only people, I can, I can only conceive of people who are already in my existing network. <laughs> Even if that's not the person who gets the casting, I'm almost like seeing them portray it. And then you can write, like, you know, writing aspects of their behavior or their charm or their charisma or their personality and and you're able to flesh out things i think like there's a few people in this uh this video that are combinations of friends i grew up with or 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 experiences that i've had or like you know events that have happened or moments that i've lived through do you know what i mean i think that's the truest way you can be um if you write about shit that you've not experienced it always ends up uh coming across maybe tone deaf or ill-informed you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i dare say i've um had no yeah i've had my fair share of experience at <laughs> bleak after parties <laughs> <laughs> I, and again you capture that really well too the sentiment of that really well i think again like the again being close to it and experiencing it from this and like seeing the script and it's always form and then obviously seeing the finished thing um was really nice you know you kind of understand the fed from you coming up to it and in a way the way you um it was a it was a bloodline weren't it on a saturday morning and he came over to me, he's like lad but then you know what i mean and he's doing all the moments and this guy Earl, earl's all sweaty and he's like he's trying to change the music with the ox lead and he's, he's like he's like you know what i mean that, that that guy at the party and ricky's doing it bang on in the middle of the bloodline you know what i mean i'm like i'll have a go at it you know <laughs> so that's yeah. my weekend <laughs> went away. I, got, I had Louis who's in the background obviously doing this for us um, and producing this podcast, filming it for me and I'm trying to not look at him <laughs> and then thingy but um, God, oh, you was him? I didn't realise it was him that filmed it, that's cool <laughs> but you know what, um, I, you know, I, I knew you were sort of aware of Dave from Manny and like yeah, I knew like, yeah. you know he was an artist that you, you fuck with and then so I just thought it'd be a lovely little connection I feel like Bloodline is like such that place where like it's a bringing together of people you know, and it would have been a, yeah, it would have been a lovely thing to have you on board that. But knowing now, I can imagine seeing Dave what significant Dave. undertaking yeah, that well, role was. Like, was and no, knowing now how much of a significant undertaking that role was, and um, and uh, yeah, it it would have been it would have been a a real baptism of fire for you. Your your first first performance out of the out of the gates, man. But your uh, your audition tape was insane, and we loved it. And it was like, I think it was, it was it was neck and neck between you and uh, Will Stevens, who who is an amazing actor, who who eventually took on took on that role, and he he fucking shone through wildly. And you know the the video itself ends up getting I got nominated as best new director in um, R and B and soul 
for that video, the the UK Music Video Awards that year. Oh, so, which was a lovely thing as well because it's like it was something that was born of just like again friendship and like authenticity and us exploring things that are really close to home for us. And then you make it and you put it out, and I think by the by the day that we put that out, we had a screening. And when I sh- when I went to share it on a, a post on Instagram, or whatever, I was so burnt out and so brain dead. And this more than anything was so 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 close to my heart, but I had no I, I had no words to share. Like I would love to say like, half the things I'm saying now, yeah, yeah. and be like what it meant to me and what we came through to do it and all this sort of shit. And I, I didn't have any of it. I didn't have any steam left. And so. Uh, almost a year later for it to be acknowledged and shortlist as a, as you know, one of the, you know, best new music videos in R&B of the year. I was like, that meant a lot, you know, because it's like, sometimes you think like, you just do your best and you try and get stuff out there and you try and make a dent and you try and make work that you, that has a bit of a, a longevity and, you know, matters to people. Maybe things get a few views or a few likes, and then there's just more shit comes out. Do you know what I mean? So, so to get that acknowledgement was really nice, you know. On that longevity thing as well, I think this is something which is really beautiful about music is that, like you said, if Mercury's Dev has got a tight fan base, like these songs get played over and over and over and over and over again. So to be a part of that is really cool. You know, often as a as a designer, you might create like a, a, a I don't know, say a piece of design which it. If it's a brand, a huge brand, obviously it gets seen every day, like the Apple logo, Amazon logo, something like that. Um, but again, like you've always got your touch on this thing, which can still be listened to in twenty years' time, thirty years' time, and it's going to age a certain way, which is which is wicked. Yeah, exactly. Or oh, like it's, it's quite often that some of the some of the some things that hold this test of time aren't off, aren't always the things that are celebrated with a bang straight out the gate, you know? It's almost like, in hindsight, people look back at our work or look back at our record or look back at our, whatever it is and think, fuck yeah, that's that was important, you know? And it might have missed, it might have just not landed bit, at, at the time. And so I think it's important just to make something that is true to you and then you can, 20 years later, you can be like, I still rate that. I think that's what's important, you know. If I think if you're making things trying to appease other people's needs or trends, or you're trying to, Dave called, Dave talks about it's like uh, you're always chasing the pendulum. Do you know what I mean? By the time you try to hit this pendulum, it swings this way, and you try to do this thing, you try to do this thing, and so you just got to do your own thing and sort of have a confidence in that, you know. Um, but yeah, this one, um, this one's another one's close to heart. All right, Lewis, um, press play on that. Hit us on play, bro. Fam, it's crazy. I'm telling you, have you guys heard of crypto? I don't know if you have, but seriously, plenty money to be made there. I'm first-hand experience. I'm telling you the truth. Nah, because when I first got into crypto, I thought it was bullshit, fam. But you know, a man like me, I had to check it out. The colors again, Ray. God, you're getting on my last nerve. You, you said we agreed. We've been listening to wanky face melting robo wank all night. I'm sick of it. This is the one day of the year I ask you not to put on your sad sack fucking Radio 65 script tonight bullshit. You're at a party. You're scaring the hoes. Hoes? What? What? Who even are you? Oh. Look. 
Dom, 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 I didn't mean it. Look, please, please, just, just one more song, Dom, please. It's different. It's better than the other ones. I swear, it's different. I swear to John Peel, it's, it's nicer. It's, I'll be nicer. I'll be better, please, Dom. Please. Erlen, I love you. But if you fuck my fucking birthday party up, I swear I'm going to tell everyone about the thing. Remember? The thing when we were nine. The thing with... Well, I'll fucking tell everyone, yeah? Everyone. Everyone. Play your fucking music. Oh, this is so good. Just, just pause it there for us, Lewis, if you don't mind. So this is the extended version, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, let me just... Right, so, Lewis, I... Look, we're going to pull up the audition. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ, so you'll have a laugh at this if you're watching it. Um, but, Lewis, I've just sent you the longer one in the background. It's just coming through now on um, on WhatsApp because I clipped it out because the one I was watching was the edit on... Um, I didn't know it was full. So if you pull that up, Lewis, I've got no T-shirt on. I'm in context. I was a little bit sweaty and that, and my jaw's swinging like I'm at an after party. <laughs> that was the brief. Chewing chuddy and everything. I had a chewing gum in. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get into the role <laughs> um but i do know what you mean like when you said before about like uh being completely vulnerable in that state and like i remember just trying to inv like just being really kind of like loose with it and free with it like you was in bloodline when you were talking to me about it and do it you know what i mean it, take, it um, takes a lot it takes a lot to to allow yourself to just be like yeah, I think, you know, to be self-conscious and just to allow yourself just to embody this thing. It's quite playful. Alex Flick, who plays um, Oscar, who's glued to the sofa, we, had, we did, him and I just did some rehearsals, just getting his, like, state nailed. And he basically just stayed in that mode the entire day. Even when he was in the background, he just stayed glued to the sofa, tripping out. And just, like, just allowed himself to sink into this mode and then just, I was like, listen, you're likely always to be in shot somewhere. So just like, and he, so he just stayed melted to the sofa the entire day. He was great. I love getting his little K-hole at the end of the let's video. See, let's, see, let's, see a, let's see your audition then. Yeah, pull it up, Lou. How are we doing? Oh, go on, right, hit me. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> this is wrong. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> Dom, Dom, stop, listen, breathe. It's your birthday. I know, I know we agreed, but that was last night and it's sort of the morning now, so... I guess, if you look at the small print, um, you don't understand that. Uh, we've been listening to your fucking a high pit ratchet fucking bullshit all night and I can't fucking take it. <laughs> holes? What holes? Who even are you? I didn't mean that, I didn't mean that, I, I, I didn't mean that. Don, just one song, just one song. This one's different, I swear it hits different. I swear, I swear, I swear to John Peel, it's not like the others, it's good. I'll be good, I'll be nice, I'll be better, I'll be better. <laughs> Ghost if you want them, think I give a fuck. You'll still be loved. Whether you like it or not. The last bit, I didn't know. I didn't know that last bit was the ch was the um, the line. I hadn't even heard the song. I don't think before. Um, no, I don't think you had. I don't think you had. Um, so that that last line was obviously going into the track, weren't it? But uh... mm. I think you're great. Even even looking that back then, I'm like, yeah, fucking, I can really see it. I still think oh, you. I still think you uh, belong on the big screen, man. I'm dying to cast you for something eventually. Oh, oh, uh, well, I look forward to the day. Lewis, just pull that video back up and let's get into the actual track, if you don't mind. But that's. I thought that would be a bit of fun anyway to show. Um, <laughs> no, I'm glad you did, man. It, 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 it yeah, made. Uh, it, it, it's, it's made me. Uh, how... I'm sorry, oh. go, Michael. I was just saying, just the way that they both had the same set of lines and how they approached it differently. Mm. Um, like, Christian's came across like slightly more aggy, aggravated. Um, yeah. The guy who played it, he, 
he he seems like he's in a bit of a dark place. Yeah, he's a bit more gentle, isn't he? Where I yeah, yeah, yeah. even That's me a... watching that back when I'm like, don't for the fucking ratchet fucking. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, is, which is sort of how I write it, but I, which is how I wrote it. But I think once we got in a, once we got in a space with Will and Victoria, who played Dom, we understood that you know it's, it's, it was important that Will had to approach it with like a childlike naivety and like almost yeah, like yeah. a, an innocence, you know, opposed to this like, uh, like a, like he wasn't. Um, like volatile with it. He was almost just like a little bit innocent and a little bit dopey and just almost like, you know what I mean? Th those two are like old, meant to be old friends and like brother, sister type stuff, you know? So it's almost just that little like that wee bro, yeah. like more like whinging and moaning than like. <laughs> I love it. Hit play for us, bro. enough but like i said for anyone listening and they want to obviously watch the videos um in full we're going to put links under the um in the bio so it should be easy to find um but yeah nice lad so you're working on some cool stuff at the minute bouncing off these <clears throat> dave and i are actually putting pen to paper on um on our next collaborative project together which is going to be maybe a short film, maybe a, a pilot for a series. We've got, we've got so many ideas flying around. Um, and yeah, I won't say too much about it yet because, you know, I, I, I don't like talking about these things before they're actually things. Do you know what I mean? I think people can get a lot of uh, cheap dopamine talking about the things that they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Say no more, say no more. <laughs> you know I mean? So, uh, but yeah, um, well, you've got some cool shit in the pipeline. We'll leave it at that. We've got some interesting stuff in the pipeline, yeah. And, and again, it's just like a natural evolution from like, you know, going from motions and then into like this and then into a slot. And then like, it's just bigger and, you know, just exploring the same world. I, I feel like all the, all the videos we've just seen, the, the, you know, the shit of commonality and like the, the, the it's just ex expanding on that world that I've sort of started creating. That's what I'm excited to do, you know? Yeah, nice. Well, I look forward to seeing you more, bro. And I think you're on a great journey to, again, to where you've got to now and going through all them. You know what I mean? There's loads more we could talk about as well. Me and Michael brought down everything that you sent through. <laughs> we were going to pull some random ones up as well, but um, we thought we'd keep it tight with them three. Um, but, like, without... It's a bit... I mean, again, if you can answer it, you can answer it. But do you have, um, like, a dream collaboration or a dream job in mind that's specific, even if it's going back to them MTV days and, like, watching artists back then and the way they created their videos, obviously there was a lot of, um, that was a, in a way a catalyst for what you're doing right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, is there that one link up that you'd, that you'd love to kind of do? 
or maybe it's a specific work. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's not a person like a specific genre or, you know. So I don't think I've got like a, a specific artist I want to work with. For me, it's like, I think there is a disconnect or like a, there is a, not disconnect, but there is like a gap that needs bridged between like all the incredible artists that exist mm -hmm. at a certain scale, or maybe a lot of them are independent, and then a massive gap in the artists who are getting massive music video budgets or the support that like that a lot of other artists need, you know? And that, that's what I found in the, in the few years I've been doing this. It's like so many artists I'm dying to work with um, don't have the support they need or don't have the budget, they can't get, you know, maybe they're independent. They're, you know, they're just trying to get by and they're trying to like make amazing art and there's not enough attention given to them. And I'm trying to find a way in which I can work with all these artists and even off like the back of like, uh, don't be an op. A lot of artists hit me up after that. Um, and I'm an artist that I would love, I'm I've been di dying to work with, you know? Yeah, nice. But off the back of don't be an op, I was just about ready to fucking have a breakdown. <laughs> so it's like, <clears throat> and people being like, yeah, cool, we fuck with this. Let's, let's do that again. You know, can we do that for us? not knowing that what it takes to make that or, or, or maybe how much has to go into it and, mm -hmm. and how like it's not feasible to repeat that time and time again. That's a really hard thing to have to be like, I want to work you yeah. in order to keep things moving forward. We need to find a new way of doing that, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just looking to continue celebrating amazing art and try to like collaborate with artists responding to their art. <clears throat> in a way that can keep my own art moving as well in a way that we can all be held in the best light and just make something that's like people can connect with you know what i mean and, and I'm, there is it can feel quite hard a lot of the time to try and like for me to create something that is like it's going to hold everyone in the best light and to to really allow my art to my art and their art to to sort of come together in a way that's like can actually work for everybody you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i i you know i just want to yeah i want to i i, th I think for me I, th I think seeing all these people working with artists who are inherent performers you know what i mean i want to make films that's what i want to do so so i feel like the pre the, the three videos we've seen that although the music videos i sort of do see them as short films you know so i just want to keep making longer form content short films into feature films but you know utilizing the the amazing sort of like showmanship and the performance abilities of the artists that are around us do you know what i mean mm -hmm. because it's like you watch you know, there's certain films or certain, you know, music videos back in the day or whatever. And it's like, I just want to celebrate people and their abilities, you know, and it, it, it exploring a world that, um, that allows me to sort of scratch an itch that I've got. So I'm excited to make longer form stuff and I'm excited to be casting the artists, you know, that are around us that maybe... I just want to not give a leg up to because they don't need me to give them a leg up. Do you know what I mean? It's not about that. It's more like I just want to be able to sort of bring together talent and to create something that I'm excited to make. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that the, the authentic next, next step for that, for me, uh, is to be making longer form stuff, yeah. you know, in and around music, you know, maybe around the music industry, maybe narratives around that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shining a light on maybe some of the struggles that, are inherent of the music industry or in the industries we work in but you know with this sort of um with this you know dark humorous tone you know yeah i don't know if that answered your question i think that was a great way of answering a question <laughs> ricky i think something that's really good about what you're saying as well is you can you can speak to a designer videographer director often it's like this is what i do and this is my work and it's like that that's that's the end do you know what i mean but like you you're on you're on a journey do you know what i mean like you, you i don't know if you want one percent in or you know i mean you're on a journey and there's so much more to explore and i think you know it's exciting to think that we're going to see something you know potentially new, completely different coming out of you um so for, for people that are also 
on this journey, which are potentially, you know, younger like videographers getting into this, um, or people that want to work in the music scene, or you know, maybe they want like um, direct films, or may maybe just a general creative. I know it's like a big, typical podcast style question, but like, have you got any advice for these guys? I think, I mean, like, for people coming up, I would say, and I, I almost feel like I need to say this less because I think like the 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 youth of today are so connected with like the their um i guess like for for me it took me a while to connect with my true voice you know what i mean and to have the confidence in order to make things that were authentic to myself and and were like this is what i like it took me a while to find myself there you know what i mean i feel like young people today are so connected to that mm -hmm. and and through social media through various platforms whatever everyone's an entrepreneur or has a business or or just is a performer or just like has outlets for their art. Do you know what I mean? I definitely think like utilize the network you do have, you know, just make shit. I think for a long time, I wasn't bold enough to, to, to fail forward. Do you know what I mean? Which is this phrase, just try shit. Cool. If it's bad, whatever, you've learned something, keep going. Do you know what I mean? I was almost quite precious about making anything because I don't want to make anything bad or I didn't want to, I felt like I didn't know enough or I wasn't there. So I would almost be apprehensive about uh, making that first step mm -hmm. till I felt I was capable of making 10 steps. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I would say just have confidence, you know, try as best you can to have confidence in what you're doing and to, to connect with something that's true to you. Uh, I think like, you know, don't feel, don't feel the pressure in order to sort of like uh, lean into trends or do things that aren't, uh, that aren't inherently you. And I think, I think when you do things that are, you know, the represent you are an expression of who you are. That is, that is like, uh, that's one of the best ways that you can sort of cut through everything that's happening. I'm not, not going to say cut through the bullshit, but there is a lot of stuff. There's like stuff, just like so much content and things going out and so much things for people to engage with day to day and how I think um, creators can um uh, cut through that stuff is by offering themselves. Do you know what I mean? Because you offer an iteration of something else you've seen or something that's drawn directly from something else that exists, that already exists. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, everyone's going to be inspired by things and you might be inspired by similar things as the next guy, but where it's different is it's gone through the filter of your head and out your mouth or out your hands or whatever. And that is the uniqueness you can bring to it is by putting yourself into it. Yeah. So that'd be my advice, I think. You know, just, you, you know, really put yourself into it and and don't shy away from who you are and like what makes you you because what makes you you will be what makes your art unique mm -hmm. so yeah thank you yeah lovely lad that's a lovely way to bring this to a conclusion you've been great ricky honestly oh, lad. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me but honestly i'm re we're really appreciative of you on and talking through that it's thick, you know and, uh, i know i appreciate being here it's been really nice it's nice it's, it's nice to have like because you and i always lose ourselves in these sort of conversations anyway even like when we d come on for a chat about some next thing <laughs> we, we do this for 40 minutes anyway and then we're like shit we should probably get to that we need to do another zoom now because it's a way to finish <laughs> so it's nice to, um it's nice to um yeah chat like this i think i think to I I'm talking about your own work in a in a forum that you're not there to do so is quite a yucky thing i think yeah yeah do you know what i mean it's like yeah. just to be yapping on about yourself and that yeah. and fucking low it so it's nice to be able to do it and sort of feel that that's what we had to do but you know i i'd love to chat to you two about you know more of your stuff so maybe we can do it again it can be a little bit of a yeah, sure definitely yeah i mean you know i mean in time over the next year or two say with more work you've got coming on it'd be great to get you back on and catch you up and even if it's just specifically talking and breaking down just one uh piece of work that you brought out do you know what i mean so we can really get into the anal kind of like nitty-gritty bits of it um yeah nice i mean and hopefully if there's you know if if anything's been put into production that we've that I've just said I, I intend to do, we can touch base on that. <laughs> First in a year, so have you done anything you said you're going to do? Nope. <laughs> I'm sure you will, Ricky. Um, your Instagram is at Ricky Gibb, um, and obviously your the agency you work for is Cold Cold Media. 
Mm. Is there any other little plugs? I did see that you're um, a representative for Mouthpiece, right? Yeah, so I've got I've got um, I'm, I've got a director's rep in the UK and the US. Mouthpiece represent me in the UK, and Las Bandas represent me in, uh, in America. So that's who that's who I get a lot of my uh, music video briefs through. Mm-hmm. And Code Media supporting me across both of those. So, but yeah, at Ricky Gibb, hit me up. Slide in my goddamn DMs. <laughs> if anyone, if anyone has any questions regarding anything like we've talked about, or like you know, creative processes or advice, I'm always here to sort of have a yap, you know. Yeah, so um, yeah, don't be, don't be, um, don't be shy and get in touch. Nice, big love, Ricky. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and Thank I you will. Man. Big love to both of you. Thanks for having me. Love it to meet you, man. Nice one. Safe. Um, that was good, bro. I enjoyed that. Thoroughly. I feel satiated. Satiated. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> um, but that was it's good. Yeah. It's like first time you're meeting Ricky. Um, so I, I had no idea what to expect, but I just felt such a, like, I don't know, such a strong bond with everything that he was saying that I could really relate to, resonate with. And um, yeah, like I, just the journey that he's on is cool and where he's going next. Um, we're going to have to get him back on. And, yes, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like in, a, in a year or two's time. And I think, like, so like we said, towards the end of the pod, then if we could get him on just for just for maybe more so it's just one piece of work he's done, you know, um, and just talk about a bit more specifically about all the details detail because there's so much stuff you could unpack in that there's so many questions you kind of i find it so interesting you know like um yeah he's done some sick stuff man yeah you know, don't be enough i was really interested about um like if he had a stylist on that because there's a very specific all that. Look yeah, and yeah. Feel coming through where it's not like do, do you know what i mean there's just something to it which but, but yeah it's just a million questions i could have asked him so she was sick that main girl i can't remember her name i'm sorry but um the one with the um the plaided, uh, plaided top on and the braids, she looks sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, hard. And when it's an over, the oversized fit that she had on at the end, when they're all doing the choreographer um, dance at the end, like, oh, yeah, it's sick. Man. I would love, honestly, to, be, to um, I think doing the doing an audition, it would have been nice to have just been on the uh, fly on the wall for uh, Ricky's creative process and seeing him live live in action, taking fucking direction from him, you know. Um, put your hand here, do this with your face, no. just give yourself to that to, to that art, that 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 piece of work for the day, and and take a back seat and just be immersed in it. I think it'd be sick. I'd, um, I love it. I love how they. I love how they get their ideas and it's like for us when we get an, an idea obviously it's design related and it was straight to our computers and our mics. I love hearing how ideas get brought to life in different contexts. I think that's what's massively inspiring to um, like the art board thing to then, like we said about going internal instead of going external. Like for us as visual artists, he's still a visual artist, I guess, but well, visual, whatever, would potentially go to the tape maybe or wherever exhibitions and look at things that are visual and take things like that where checking yourself internally. But there's an art to that self-editing though, being able to look at, I'm still trying to get better at it, but looking at your work and stepping back as a, as, the, as the person who's done the work, removing yourself from that and being like, right, is this actually is this actually good? And I guess you'd, you'd look more internally if we were creating more artistic pieces. Obviously, like a lot of our works driven yeah. by, you know, designing something for a product which is selling and blah, blah, blah. Um, to their yeah. fucking internal, do you know what I mean? The client's it's internal. It's really inspiring. And I think, you know, we've had conversations about creating things which more represent us. And I, you know, I hope that we can put some time to do those things because I think it's super that's us. valuable. That is- like that's if we're eating anything from that conversation, it's that bit, you know. Like, mm-hmm. and we're, we're the conversations are already happening. So, so yeah, thank you for listening. Um, that's another one in the box. Please like, share, subscribe, and all them things there. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Michael. Big love, bro. Nice one, bro. Thank you very much for your time.